Hey, hope you're doing all right today. This tutorial is going to be about incorporating Vanta.js into a next project. So uh, I got a comment from, shout out to Louis B, who gave me this idea. Uh, Vanta is this cool library that allows you to have these nice animated uh, backgrounds. And there's a little bit of extra work involved to get it set up with a React or a Next project. And so I'll link the documentation that I, I referenced for all of this, but um, we'll walk through how to get this set up in the next project. So I've got my little tutorials thing here. So I'm going to do npx create uh, next app. I'll just call it Vanta. Call it whatever you want. All right, so I'll change into Vanta and open that up. And then we need a couple of dependencies. So we'll do yarn add. We need Vanta itself. And then I was experimenting with this. I hadn't used Vanta before. And so when I was playing around with this, I just had Vanta by itself. And it was giving me some issues with the default background, which was birds. And so I looked at the repo for Vanta and I saw an issue in the little issues section. And they said that uh, one of the solutions is to have three installed as well. So we're going to go ahead and install three. So make sure you have Vanta and three. And then we'll go ahead and start it up with Yarn Dev. So in order for um, Vanta to work, it needs to have a script tag in the head. And so we're going to do that by using next uh, underscore app JS. So here, and we're going to keep this as a functional component. You could do the class based version of this as well using the lifecycle methods, but we are going to use uh, use effect. So we'll import use effect from react. And then inside of our function, we're going to do, uh, we'll have our use effect here. So here's the boilerplate. Um, and we'll do, um, we'll create a variable called three script, because this is the script that we need. It's for, uh, for three. So we'll set that as an element So this is making it a, a, a script tag. Then we'll set some attributes. So we'll do set attribute. We'll give it an ID of three script so that we can reference this element by its ID. And then we'll give it a source. So the source is, I'm gonna grab this URL here from the notes. So we've got the source, we've got the ID, and then this is how we'll add it. So we'll get at elements by tag name. And I'll just show you this before I actually add it. So if we console log what I'm doing here, document dot get elements by tag name and then head. If we flip over to uh, localhost and refresh it, there's our boilerplate. If we look at the console, this is what we're getting from that console log. And you can see if we target the key of zero, we'll get the we'll get head there. And so we'll do at zero. And then we're gonna append a child, and that's gonna be the three script. So if we flip back over and we uh, look at the elements, so we'll refresh it just to be sure. Yeah, there at the bottom is our three script. And so one other thing, just um, a little React sort of next thing um, is, oh, looks like we still console log that. So get rid of the console log. Um, another thing is, so, we're going to have this cleanup here at the bottom. 
And this is just a safeguard to make sure that we're not accidentally adding this script every single time and like having duplicate scripts. So we'll say if there is a three script, then we'll remove it. And so not going to go super deep on lifecycle methods here, but basically what's happening is since we have an empty array, anytime this component, uh, the, the new component mounts, it's going to run this use effect and it's going to run it once. So you can think of this section as like the component did mount. So when it mounts, we're going to attach this script. And then when the component unmounts, or in this case, the page, uh, then we're going to remove that script. And then when the next page loads, it's going to load this um, script back up for us. So this is just, uh, again, this little safeguard here for us. So that's all we need for uh, app.js. So now in the index, we're going to need a couple more things at the top. So we're going to use uh, use effect, use ref, and use state from React. We are going to, we'll grab the, the first one, which is birds from, let me just grab this uh, file location here. And then importing star as three from three. And then let me blow this up. Actually, I should have done this earlier, but just to make sure that it's a little bit more visible. All right. So, um, and then just flipping back to app real quick. It's bigger if you need to reference it. So back to index.js, uh, we have all of our imports taken care of. Inside of our main, we can get rid of all of this stuff. And then we don't need the footer either. I mean, you could keep it if you want, but I'm not going to I'm not going to keep that for this project. At the top, we're going to create a variable called vanta effect an updater of set vanta effect and we'll give it a state of 0. And again, I'm just pulling all of this from the documentation on uh, GitHub. Then we're going to create a ref. And if you're not familiar with refs, uh, basically this is a way to access the underlying DOM node itself. So instead of a util utilizing the virtual DOM that React has, we're actually making a reference to the, the node, it's the uh, HTML node itself. So we'll attach that uh, in just a minute. Then we'll have our use effect and it is going to be watching the Vanta effect. So when the component mounts and when there's a change in Vanta effect, the use effect is going to run. So if there is no Vanta effect, then we'll set it. And we're going to set it to this uh, birds that takes in an object. And we'll have the element is going to be targeting our vanta ref dot current, which we have not, this has not been attached yet. And then we're also going to attach the three property here. Let me put a comma there. So this three, again, that was uh, because I was having issues with, uh, for whatever reason, this birds wasn't working. And so I saw that having three on here as well um, helped to fix whatever issue we were having. And then similarly, we're going to have our cleanup. So after this, we'll have return. Uh, we'll return uh, a function that says if there is a Vanta effect, then we'll destroy it. So the last thing that we need to do in this particular file is attach our reference. So our ref is equal to that Vanta ref that we set earlier. Oops, this is, should not be capital, lowercase. So this, this ref, this main 
shown here. Uh, we've just attached the the Vanta ref. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't probably do that in in practice, but whatever element that you want that background to show up on, that's where you attach the ref. So if we save, we should start to see some stuff happening. There it is. So there's our beautiful background. Let's make this look a little bit better than like a rando floating block of vertical weirdness in the center here. So if we go uh, to our styles and then home.module.css, few adjustments so we can get rid of all the flex stuff here in our container. And we'll do, uh, let's try a width of just 100% of the viewport width. And then main, we can do, uh, we'll do, we'll give it a height of 50% of the viewport height, and then just some extra padding. And so this is not, um, like you probably wouldn't want to set an actual like explicit height, but just for the purposes of this, since we don't actually have like any content in here, we'll just give it a, give it a height so we can see it okay so it looks like nothing happened or like it just moved over so sometimes you just got to refresh and there we go now a couple of uh, tips for this is they suggest giving a fallback um, background so since we have um, this main uh, section having the the background here we can give it a fallback background color of like uh, we'll just do black. And so it still shows up, but that safeguards any um, any like older browsers or or browsers that don't don't support this uh, uh, this library. And then a couple of cool ways to kind of tweak this. So there uh, the Vanta JS website is super helpful because you can like play around with this stuff. like let's say I want to check out this net. Uh, background so this one looks kind of cool and let's see I, I think I can change the color let's see so let's let's mess with that a little bit so you can see down here the color is changing so let's do like this kind of greenish and let's do more of like a I don't know like kind of a blue I like that and uh, let's see, max distance. Let's increase that. So now it's a little bit more dense. So now what we need to do is make a couple of changes. Um, I'm going to grab max distance, background color, and color. Just copy it straight from here. And then over in our uh, index file, what we can do is, so since we're using net, birds just needs to change to net birds here can be changed to net and then birds here and then for those other properties we just uh, paste it into our net object and we might need to put quotes around that actually let's go ahead and just do that uh, maybe we don't need them let's let, we'll check it out refresh okay let's try it without the quotes Cool. So you don't need the quotes after all. So those are some ways to customize it, and you can play around uh, with the, the little editor here and go wild with it. So super customizable, super cool. Just a couple of extra steps to get this going in Next. So I'll leave links to the documentation that I used for this. Um, and uh, other than that, thanks for watching. And uh, until next time, have a good one.